Warmest greetings to everyone watching today's service for the West Kirk worship team. My name is Dave Kendall and we're contributing to today's worship alongside Heather and Jim. Our Minister Maboob is on a very well-deserved holiday for a couple of weeks. We pray that he will have a safe, restful and peaceful time with his family. We all hope and pray that you are keeping safe and well as things start to ease from the lockdown restrictions. Remember that each week Laura circulates an excellent newsletter which gives an update on everything to do with the West Kirk and also posts a daily Bible reading and message. You can also contact Laura with any prayer requests until the Minister returns. I would like to acknowledge the input to today's service that I received from the Reverend Angus Matheson, who is the Head of Faith Nurture in the Church of Scotland, and a wide range of online material I found which fitted perfectly with the theme that I was developing for the service. It's amazing the inspiration that you can get from listening to and reading other people's thoughts about the Bible. This morning's call to worship is taken from James chapter 1 verses 2 to 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The good news that we'll be focusing on today is that we shouldn't run away from the problems that we face in life. We can become stronger and happier by trusting and remaining true to our faith in God, which will help us to overcome these obstacles. Let us now bow our heads for the opening prayer. God of love, you are with us in every transition and change. As we enter into these new days post lockdown with excitement and even some anxiety, we recall your deep compassion, presence and abounding love. We thank you for the gifts, talents and skills with which you have blessed us. We thank you for the experiences that you have brought us to this moment. We thank you for the work of others that gives breadth and depth to our own work and lives. Be with us as we move forward, rejoicing with you and supporting one another. God, these are hard times times of challenge and questioning, where even our faith can be tested. But your presence still surrounds us, engulfing us in your peace, sending your Holy Spirit to enable us and give us strength. In all that we face, keep us connected to you and to each other. Give us strength and resilience to meet this hour. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, is bring to the Lord a glad new song. This is hymn number 106, taken from Church Hymnary 4. The music is Jerusalem, and the words are on the screen, so it's a very well-known tune and easy to sing along to.
Our Bible reading this morning is read by Jim and is taken from the New Testament. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers ask God for what you need. Always asking him with a thankful heart and God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Jesus Christ. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise. Things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely and honourable. Put into practice what you learnt and receive from me, both from my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. Amen. And may God give us blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. Once again, we raise our voices to worship God by singing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which is Mission Praise 746. As we reflect on how to cope through these difficult times, think of these words from the hymn. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer heavy trials and temptations is there trouble anyway discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every Take it to the Lord in prayer Are we weak and heavy laden Covered with a load of care Precious Savior still our refuge Take Friends despise, forsake you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In His arms He'll take and shield you. We will find a solace there. In you will find a always there 
Let us now reflect on this morning's Bible reading. I've never been a great one for reading books. It's not something I like to do for leisure, though I've always had to read a lot in my various studies and jobs. However, I do enjoy reading magazines, articles, looking at the news and doing research online. There's been a lot about the coronavirus on the internet over the recent months and most of it has been a very difficult read. One of the more light-hearted reports reflected on a poll commissioned by Christian Aid that was trying to determine which television priest the public would prefer to have us lead us through the pandemic crisis. It found that the Vicar of Dibley, the Reverend Geraldine Granger, would be the public's choice. In second place was Sister Evangelina from Call the Midwife, with Father Ted Crilly from Father Ted taking third place. I wonder what it would have been like if these characters had actually been around to help lead us through the crisis. Having said this, it was also reported recently that the World Health Organization had produced guidelines highlighting the special role that religious leaders and faith-based organizations can play in saving lives and reducing illness related to COVID-19. It said, they are a primary source of support, comfort, guidance, and direct health care and social service for the communities they serve. They can provide pastoral and spiritual support during public health emergencies and other health challenges, and can advocate for the needs of vulnerable populations. Religious leaders are integrated at their communities through service and compassionate networks, and are often able to reach the most vulnerable with assistance and health information and identify those most in need. Religious leaders are a critical link in the safety net for vulnerable people within their faith community and wider communities. For me, this highlights the key role that the modern church has at times like this. There is no doubt that the coronavirus pandemic has impacted on everyone's lives. Whether it be requiring us to live in isolation discharge a challenging key worker's role, work from home, be furloughed, maybe become unemployed, or in the limit have our family or friends' health directly impacted by the virus. During the height of the lockdown, I read that there'd been something a resurgence of faith as people searched for answers or maybe prayed for themselves, their families and others impacted by COVID-19. This is understandable, as our lives suddenly went through such an unprecedented and dramatic change. A recent survey indicated that a quarter of adults in the UK have watched or listened to a religious service since the coronavirus lockdown began. And one in 20 have started praying during the crisis. The findings of the poll reinforced indications that we've also seen in the Church of Scotland statistics that increasing numbers of people were turning to faith amid the uncertainty and despair. Our church has a really important and sometimes very practical role to play. It is a time of great opportunity for our church to transform itself. During this strange time, churches have experienced unexpectedly high numbers of people tuning into some online or broadcast services. A new way of worshipping for many. This transition was also seen through the success of religious television programmes such as Reflections from the Key. God is certainly at work during this time. The survey, which was commissioned by Christian Aid Agency Tear Fund, found that a third of young adults aged between 18 and 34 had watched or listened to an online or broadcast religious service, compared with one in five adults over the age of 55. One in five of those who had tuned into services in the past few weeks say they had never been to church before. It was also interesting to see what people were praying for during lockdown. The most frequent subjects of prayers included family, friends, thanking God, frontline services, someone unwell within COVID-19, other countries with COVID-19 and for their own personal situation. Isn't it good to think of more people praying in this way, even remembering to be thankful as well as looking for God's help, which is so important. 
We all know that when we feel overwhelmed by the chaos and difficulty of life, we can turn to God in prayer for peace and serenity. In this time of uncertainty, fear, seclusion and separation from what we term normal, our human solution and inclination would normally be to handle it ourselves. However, that is not what the Bible or the Lord tells us. Turning to the Lord should be our first response, not our last resort. In our Bible reading today, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 tells us, Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. The message is that we should pray for the peace we are looking for in these difficult times. Firstly, we must honestly declare our belief and trust in God as our Lord and Saviour. Then make our request of peace known to God in whatever personal sense we need. On a personal level, I found myself praying more than usual. There's been so much to worry about and concern us all, but God is with us in our trials and we still have so much to be thankful for. There is no question that COVID-19 is a bad thing and has brought pain, sadness and grief to so many people. However, there are good gifts that God can bring even from this. As we think about our own lives and how we have all had to survive through COVID-19, we've been reminded that we cannot be in complete control of our lives. The pandemic has shown us that we are utterly and completely dependent on the living God. If ever we thought that we were in control of things, it was clearly a pleasant illusion. Verse 9 of today's reading gives us a real insight into what is expected of us. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions, and the God who gives us peace will be with you. Jesus Christ, God's Son, knew that he was utterly, completely and totally dependent on his Father. Let us pray that both we and increasing numbers of people across the world have realised about our dependence on God in these days. And as a result, we will all be transformed a little bit more into the image of his son Jesus, enabling us to display the Christian love, kindness, compassion and care to all around us that Jesus showed through his own words and actions. There are many things in this short Bible reading to reflect on in our faith. The need to be joyful, to rejoice, to be gentle to others and to fill our minds with things that are good no matter what circumstances we face. What better messages can there be for us about how to behave at this time as we continue to emerge from lockdown? Finally, let's go back to the words we reflected on from verse 6 of today's Bible reading which are so true in navigating our way through this time. Don't worry about anything But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. May we all remember to put our trust in God at all times, our personal responsibility to others during the pandemic, and the need to be thankful for all that we have, even in these most difficult of times. Amen. Heather will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Father, thank you for your goodness to us, that you are keeping us all safe and in your care. Thank you for all the good we see locally, nationally and in the world. We rejoice in the good. We ask for our government leaders, for unity, that you will help each one make the right decisions on our behalf. We ask for our scientists and those working for a vaccine that it will be safe. We ask for the media, that they will be careful what they report and not frighten people. God, we ask you only to let us hear what we need to hear. Father, we ask for all those coming out of shielding this week, that they will feel refreshed and unafraid as they move into the new normal. Help each one with the uncertainty and that they will move on with joy. Let us be people who will help and pray for others. We thank you for Captain Tom and the many more elderly 
who are excelling themselves with your love and determination, giving words of wisdom and strength to a nation. Thank you that the world is hearing from you through ordinary people. We declare we are not finished. We have much more to do. Give us hearts that say yes and amen. Forgive us when we limit ourselves with our small thinking. Father, let us be people who dream, have vision and move in our gifting. Help us all at West Kirk not to be faint-hearted, but to move in your mighty power. Be with those who are in care homes and are alone. Give them visitations from you that their days will be full of joy. Thank you for Jesus, that above all else, you desire that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. We declare a new dimension of health, a new level of faith, a realm of energy and divine strength. We declare we are living, walking testimonies in the world. We have victory and new life in Jesus. Oh, that the world would come and know that you protect, preserve, bless and reach every person in our family, church family and our friends. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We will now hear a lovely Christian song from Iona Community with very touching and meaningful words. The song is titled, We Will Meet When the Danger Is Over. With God's help, this moment will come at the West Kirk when we will all be safely together again. We will meet when the danger is over. We will meet when the sad days are done. We will meet sitting closely together. And be glad our tomorrow has come We will join to give thanks and sing gladly We will join to break bread and share wine And the peace that we pass to each other be more than a casual sign So let's make with each other a promise that when all we've come through is behind we will share what we missed and find me in the things that once troubled our mind Until then may we always discover Faith and love to determine our way That's our hope and God's will and our We will now close our worship with a prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we can feel exhausted at this time, coping with the implications of the pandemic, the sadness brought to so many through illness and bereavement. Some of us are working or furloughed or just stuck indoors for many different reasons. Parents of children who are grown up and maybe have been separated by isolation requirements parents who have been homeschooling, people juggling the demands of domestic life, children and work, struggling with the new world where we need to constantly wash our hands, wear face coverings and have to spray things down with disinfectant. Raise up more helpers for those who are overextended at this time, Lord. Stir up the desire to serve in those who are passive 
help us to enjoy quality sleep and make us aware of anything that might help us to relax. During this strange time, we have discovered new ways, new connections which the lockdown has fostered that can continue as we begin to rebuild and perhaps reevaluate our lives. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our lips to speak, and use our hands to do the work you call us to. Increase our compassion and love for ourselves and each other. Lord, we miss the fellowship of being together in church. We pray that as today's song told us, we shall meet again in your name to worship and praise you when the time is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we go out into the world to praise your name for another week. Amen.